people's right on. We are we are on fire tonight. Welcome, gang. Welcome. So good to see you all here. People are still logging in. I've hustled you to tell your teammates to get here. Make sure they're here, guys. Um, Pronto. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. Good stuff. Hey, hey, Adina, it's like freaking 4 a.m. for that girl. It's like 3 a.m. And Razvan, tell you what, commitment. Commitment. Hustlers, hustlers. I like it. I brought my I brought my hustle water bottle right here. Where did you get that from, JG? You don't know. No. Carrie, who bought me this? Britta? What? I think Britta bought me this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I should know this. I'm pretty I'm 99% sure it's Britta. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Good. <sighs> Good. Um, so uh, we are gonna talk about well, it's a fireside chat today. Um, I really, really would love any questions that uh, you guys have got. I like that plant too, Amy. I Yes, um, the plant in the background, thank you. Thank you. The umbrella plant, you just can't kill it. So that's what <laughs> I need. <laughs> and did you see, guys, if you saw my hustle, you would have seen that I've got, uh, and I saw that Jerry doesn't even have it yet. I can't, how have I got it? Jen's got it. Precinct is in Toronto and Jerry doesn't have it yet. So I don't know why. I, I'm going to actually message him now because I was talking, I had lunch with Corey Robert today and he said he has a copy. Oh, he doesn't have it because he's been in audit. He's been traveling. They're oh, at his house. That's why. Watch it. Okay. That's the mystery solved. That's <laughs> so, Jen, that's why. It's just beautiful. I mean, the Precinct, Precinct is the first printer that I ever dealt with. Um, I can remember being so scared. Talk about coachability, uh, JG. I can remember being so scared because I had to sign this form. The very first book that went to print, I had to sign this form and say that we were responsible for it. And <laughs> we, we had Carol, you know, uh, paying them uh, two or $3,000 to get this book printed. And, and, you know, I'm fine with my, when I'm spending my money, but when I'm spending someone else's money, I have difficulty with that. Most people are the other way around and I wish I had that gene, but I don't. Um, and I can remember um, the first contract, it was a contract that we signed with Friesens. And uh, yeah, it's interesting how far, you know, how far we've come. And JG, a lot of everything, everything that, uh, everything that I have, Yes, it's been me. Yes, it's been it's been Mike. Yes, it's been the people that have surrounded me. But my coaches and mentors through this has been you and Jerry, and the other you know the other people that have that have um, been kind enough to come and say to me, Deb, you know, you could do this this way, or you could do this that way. Um, but you know the 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 calls, and I haven't had too many. But the, I always know when, when I'm needing to be adjusted or put in a direction, JG, because I get a message from you or, or, or Jerry saying, Debbie, you're open to coaching. <laughs> and, and I don't know whether anybody else has had that, uh, that question asked on to them. I'm sure they have, but when when jg or carol, carol says yes on the <laughs> there we go. anna says yes too when you have that question posed to you it's a it's a um oh i can i can ask you that question carol um it's uh it, it's it's a privilege i think that's the that's the main like someone actually cares enough so it's like, that's it's a like, really good point. That's a really good point right there. Because because most people feel like you're doing it to them, not that you're doing it for them. Yeah, that's right. It's like when when you're at a party or at a bar. Um, not that I've ever been to those places, but if you've had a party or at a bar and you go into the bathroom and and you do what you've got to do and you come out and you've got your dress stuck in your pantyhose, okay, in your hose. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I know, right? I know. Um, but if, if uh, why can't I see the chat? I'm not sure, Bonnie. Um, but if you know, someone who cares about you will say, Deb, sort yourself out, you know, or if your fly's undone or whatever, they care enough to let you know. The people that are too afraid to say anything, 
um, in my opinion, just don't care enough, JG. Um, and mm. coaching is the same. If you've got, if you're, if you're, if you're off track or doing something that that is not right, not helping, not good for you, then you need to you need to have people around you that will say uh, that will say exactly that. Tell you tell you what you need to do. Yeah, you know, you bring up an interesting thing. And guys, this is just for those of those that are new to the team. And I see MJ is here from Montreal. She's new to the Blackheart Marketing Group team. And Grace, I imagine, is probably here. And she's new to the Blackheart Marketing Group team. So welcome, folks. There's probably actually several new uh, Blackheart Books team members. So all of you that are brand new, welcome. Welcome to the family. Uh, from Deb and I, we are offer our greatest welcome. And this is a heck of a you know, uh, fireside chat for you to be joining. We do these once a month, once every two months, give or take, say once every two months, where it's just Deb and I that talk about a particular topic with everybody on the line. So you can see there's, it's not everybody, it's about half the companies here right now. But, um, and, and that's what this is about. It's about having a discussion. Today is about coachability and how we've been coached over the year and just, over the years and just, just have a chat about that. And, you, the team, you guys can get what you will. First of all, you can ask questions. It's a great time to ask questions of us. It's a great time to have Deb and I's opinion on whatever you're thinking about. Even if it has nothing to do with coachability, I'm still happy to talk about it because it's rare that you get Deb and I in the same room um, like this. So happy to talk about it, you know, anything. I'd like to keep it around coachability. I'd like to keep it focused on that. But if there's a question you need answers, I'm there to answer it. Um, but this coachability, Deb, is critical. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Let's talk about who can be a coach because I think a lot of people, I know I used to feel like, okay, a coach is a particular person or a particular th – and I've learned over the years, the last 15 years that there's several different types of coaches. So what are different types of coaches for you, Deb? For me, it is just one thing. You are qualified to be a coach if you're coachable. Um, if you're, if you, if you have people in your life that that uh, that are there to lead and guide you, that you are open to. Um, uh, but I hear you. So number one, you've got to be coachable yourself before you can offer anyone else any advice. So true. So um, true. Uh, and then the different kinds. I was thinking about you this morning. You know, you have your you have your fitness coach. Um, you have uh, you have your business. I also want to talk about the difference between a coach and a mentor, um, JG. I think that would be interesting for us to discuss as well. Sure. All right. Um, different coaches. Uh, you can have a spiritual coach. Uh, you can have a um, you can have you know, a, my, a more mindset coach. Uh, a business coach, a financial coach. Um, there's a lot of different, and some people are, are qualified to speak in in some areas, and some people are qualified to speak in other areas. Um, sure. I think that you can identify in people what you need from them as well. Uh, you know, in our work environment, you know, I I don't talk to anybody about anything other than policies, procedures, unless they ask me, unless they knock on my door and say, I need some help with this. Uh, and, uh, you know, with JG, Jerry, myself, Bonnie, um, you know, we all have that, we all have that open door policy. Um, but from me, you're going to get, you're going to get policies, procedures, customer, you know, all of, all the things that surround um, Black Card Books, you know, what Jerry and, uh, has in his heart. That's, that's, that's where we're headed is what is fulfilling what he has in his heart. And I think this, this, this question of, of who can be a coach, you, you mentioned something beautiful there, which is you can't be a great coach in, unless you are coachable. That's, I 100% agree with that. I think we should dig into that a little deeper. But one of the things I've noticed over the years is that you, you do have coaches for various parts. You know, I got a fitness coach who's a physical person that I go to and get my ass kicked every day. You know, I got a financial mentor that I speak with. I got a, I got, that I speak with once in a while. And then I have other coaches, and this is actually quite important, is I have other coaches that don't even know they're my coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just watch them, and I just I know that I want to be more like them, and I want to do more like them, and I just watch them from a distance. I read their books. I watch their videos. I follow what they're doing online. And 
even though I'm not on the inner circle, even though I'm not on the on the absolute inside grain, I'm still being coached by them and I'm watching. And one day I may be inside the inner circle. I don't know. But I think that that's important is that you, you, may, be, you may have coaches that, that you can get close to. Deb, myself, Jerry, Bonnie, the leaders of the company, your immediate leaders. And, it, and, and, that's, and that's great. And then there may be some, an author or, um, uh, or a, a thought leader. I know, Deb, one of your coaches from a distance that you've had is the Facebook girl. Cheryl, uh, what's her name? Yes, um, she's, that's right. She's the COO of, uh, of Facebook. And the other person is uh, Ariana Huffington of yes. Huffington Post. Um, uh, yeah, I do. I watch them really, those two ladies, really, really closely. Uh, and I also watch their, uh, their following, the, the women that look up to them. Uh, yeah. I also, I also, because they're sort of more, uh, they're more, um, uh, they're, they're, I could, I could actually get to, to, to know them more than what I could, uh, um, Sandra or Ariana. So yeah, it's, uh, that's right. We, we, there's people that we, that inspire us. Um, and you know, it's, it's important to have those people in our life. It's really important to have those people in our life. I believe JG. And it's not, the other thing too that's very interesting is it's not, uh, and I guess once you get deep into the coaching thing and being open to coaching, you start to realize that. And I think that's, that's the key is being open to coaching. And, and you, you, by, as I become more and more open to coaching, I've realized that it's not coach student or coach and you. It's, it doesn't, it can be like this. It can be like this. It doesn't freaking matter what it is. That person has a particular, uh, sorry, I just got to grab this real quick. Sorry, go ahead, Deb. I got to grab this, sorry. No problem. Um, just taking on from where JG was, was saying is that, you know, we do, we identify with different people uh, and we need to understand and find that thing. If there's something missing in our life, if there's something that we want, we can also look for that in other people and other people that are around us, other people that we do admire um, more from a distance. Um, uh, who are some important people to you guys? You know, have you identified who you look up to? Uh, have you identified, um, you know, the, where you want to be, where you want to grow to? Uh, I think that's also really important is to understand that place that you want to grow to. Um, you know, I've got written, written down here. And the other thing too that I think is really important is when you are being coached, it's so important to, to be yourself. I remember, gosh, I can remember, um, I think I would have been in my late 20s. And uh, it's funny the things that, that, that you come to understand. I would have been in my late twenties and I've seen it in some of our team members that come on board. Um, and you come into a, 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 new, a new scenario, a new job scenario, you come into it and um, you're all, you're extremely keen and you want to impress, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You want to impress, but I can remember, uh, I can't actually remember the person that it was. It's probably a good thing. But I came into the situation and I'm wanting to demonstrate, you know, what, whatever it was, was typing or what I knew or, and it's like, um, they're trying to guide me within the office scenario. And it's like, every time they'd say something, yes, I've got it. Yep, I've got it. Yep, I've got it. And all, eventually I sort of saw them and, and they stopped putting into me. It's like, all right, well, you got it, you know, go for it. You obviously know more than me. You've been here for three days. So, you know, you, you, you just go for it. Just unmute yourself, JG. You just go for it. Um, so, oh, yes. <laughs> um, so I, you know, it, it, and it comes from the right heart. Uh, and I think it's important to recognise that in other people too. You know, it is the right heart. You want to you bring what you've got and, you know, you think you can make a difference. But, you know, sometimes you just need to... Need to Calm down, learn the ropes a little bit, and be and be coachable. Be 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 a person where you know where you can be guided and directed. Um, and I think the other thing too, JG, is that I've never had a problem. You can be older than me. You know, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but JG is quite a bit younger than me. 
Um, he's actually younger than both my kids. Um, so he, uh, but he, if he, he I, both Mike and I, um, we both have so much to learn from him. Um, thank you, Bree. She had no idea. Didn't notice. That's it. I'll put you on my Christmas list. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and that's important. It, it, age, age doesn't come into it either. But then I've always learnt from my kids, JG, as well. So you just got to be open. Not, not stupid. Not, not stupid. I'm not saying that. But, you know, there, there are people in your life that, you, that are there to coach you. Well, and I, and I think that there's, and I, I totally appreciate that. And you're, you know, I think I've learned, I've definitely learned more uh, in the last uh, seven, eight years from the, from my colleagues at Black Card Books, you and Jerry and Mike and Bonnie. And, and this is a key thing. Like if you think about, if you think about the people that, that, that we've, we've seen come through this company that started wherever they started in the company. And today they, they, they coach us. I mean, I have so much respect for Bonnie and her ability to sell. I mean, I trained the damn girl on how to sell and now she's Miss world. And, and she started as an executive assistant to a man we don't want to talk about. And, 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 and now I have so much respect for her. She's my coach in selling. If I don't know how to make a sale, I call Bonnie. And, and having that, having that mental maturity mm. to be able to, to start with someone that you're training and then, then become your coach is amazing. I, I love that about you. I love that about every leader here. And it's not an ego thing. I mean, I look at the people on this list and I could name several names of people I look up to for certain things. Mm. Like, for example, I, Barry Spilchuk. Okay, so I look up to Barry and in, in many ways, he, he doesn't know this. He has no idea what I'm about to say right now. But his ability to connect with people is unbelievable. The guy's got a heart the size of my head. And he puts it out on his sleeve. And he, he connects with people so deeply. And every time I'm with him, I'm watching him. And I'm thinking, how can I do that better? How can I be better at that? And, and that's, you know, and, and that's so he's always, he doesn't even know he's coaching me, but he's coaching me. I can think of another young lady, Christine, that in Seattle, she gave me this plaque. We, I saw, I saw her uh, in, I think it was April or May or something like this. And we went and, we, and she bought me this plaque and I thought, man, how cool is this? She, she took the time to go get this made and, you know, and because she did this for me, she doesn't, she doesn't even know that, but because she did this for me, I'm always thinking who I can take time out for, who can I, and yeah. that was an act of coaching. She didn't even freaking know it. Yeah. And and there's there's so many other people on this on this line. Uh, you Deb, with your with your ability to see, I mean, you guys don't know this, but Deb's coaching me every day on her ability to see things I can't see. Her vision, she can see way further than I can see. I'm often concerned about and looking, you know, around my immediate thing, and I'm looking at at the next. You know, she's got a vision further than I can see and I appreciate that and I'm open to it and I'm and there's so many people so that's an important part of this Deb I think that's one key takeaway we can make from this is coachability and co having a coach has nothing to do with age gender where they sit in the company uh, whether they're male whether they're female I don't care who and where and why if you could learn if you're truly open to coaching and you're open to growing that's what makes the difference. And, and you'll notice, and, and you'll notice if you guys have picked up on this, Deb and I, we haven't talked about, it's about you. It's about your openness to coaching, not their willingness to coach you, your openness right. to coaching. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that was my, that was the, the example of me coming into work. Um, yes, I agree with that too, Mike, that a coach has to demonstrate success in where I'm trying to go. I do agree with that. Um, the, uh, the, uh, in talk about coaches, you know, I, I, I often think everyone, it's a given, you know, Mike has, Mike has <laughs> coached this little hippie girl from the bush. Um, for <laughs> she, let me tell you, I went camping with Deb Turton and she's far from the bush. She may have, <laughs> you, you may have come from the bush, but let me tell you, she's far from the bush and she ain't comfortable anymore in the bush. 
<laughs> he's left the far It's not even in there anymore. You know how you can, you know how some people say you can take, you know, the girl out of the bush and you can't take the bush out of the girl. Well, that's not true. It's completely <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. Um, I think the other thing that's it, it goes along with what Mike said, um, if like JG, he, he, what he just said about my vision and my ability to see things, it's because of my role, my role as COO, I've got to look at the whole picture. And that's, that's, that's a scary thing, but it comes quite naturally to me. Um, that's, where, that's where I can give some, some uh, value. JG, <laughs> my goodness, um, the way he creates products, the way he sees where the money is, the way he, he, he approaches business, the way he does that is, it, it, I've never in my whole life actually come across anyone that, that has the, ability, the business abilities that he does and the freedom that he gives them, my goodness. Um, so we need to lean in to what uh, we need to lean into what other people have to offer and there is the coach and the coach for you that's where you can identify the coach and it doesn't have to be a threatened thing some people feel threatened because someone they see someone else is gifted or talented or or good really really good in an area they feel threatened um, and that's that the, the basis of that to me is pride. You know, you can't possibly know everything about everything. Um, and, and Mike, I know that that's a shock to you, but it's just <laughs> not possible. Even if you can track submarines from, you know, 10,000 feet in the air, it's just you can't know everything about everything. <laughs> Um, it's, it's and I think understanding that and, and understanding that, that bringing um, JG's expertise and, and what he knows and Jerry's expertise and, and Bonnie's and, you know, all these amazing people that we have around us, that's what makes us the whole, that's what makes us the, the size that we can become able to take all of this stuff yeah it's obviously a, a shock to Trevon as well that he doesn't know yeah. everything um, <laughs> but that's what embracing that is uh is is what makes us great yeah no, absolutely of other people isn't it and I, I think I, I wrote down a few three things that uh, Jerry actually shared with me when I first started working with him I don't I don't, I don't think I've talked about this very much before, but he told me there's three keys to being coachable. And Deb, you and I do this naturally, but I think that someone, there's definitely a, of the 100 people on this, on this call right now, there's people who, who are thinking to themselves, well, this does not necessarily come naturally to me. So let me give you a couple key, three key things you can do. So write these down. If you're going to take any notes, now would be a good time. Grab your pen and paper. The first thing, Deb, is give permission. Yeah, that's right. You have to you have to give others permission and it sounds just like this. Deb, if you see anything in me that's getting in my way of getting of being successful, being more successful, doing more, having more, being more, please feel free to tell me. Please do not hesitate to tell me if I'm being an idiot or if I'm not seeing if I if there's any blind spots that I can't see, please tell me. So giving permission. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is ask for it. Yeah. Giving permission and asking for it are two different things. First, you have to give permission, and it's it may you know it may have to be done several times. It's not just a one-time thing. You know, you have to remind them that it's okay, and you have to remind yourself that you're open to coaching as well. I think that's key. Um, then you have to ask for the feedback, ask for the coaching. You know, I think about Anna Dow, I see her on the line and I think about Amy and I think about our sales leaders, Jamie, and I, and I think about Jose V and I think about, and now I'm thinking about the new people who just came in, Grace and MJ. And I'm thinking, man, you guys have come such a long way as salespeople, as publishing consultants, because you've given Bonnie the freedom to coach you. You've given Bonnie the freedom to say, help me and tell me 
And, and that's key. And every time you screw up a deal or you miss or whatever, you, um, you ask for it. You ask for Bonnie's feedback. You ask for Jerry's guidance. You ask me. You, you, you ask, and that's important. And then I think the third thing, so the first thing, give permission. Second thing, ask for feedback and ask for coach, coaching. And the third thing is report back the results. And I think that's the key that most people miss, Deb, is they don't report back the results. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I ask you for coaching, so Deb, um, I can't see how these two things connect. I'm, I got a blind spot. Please help me. And then you help me. I say, thank you very much. When I implement, when I action, when I try that thing you've coached me on, I should report back to you and tell you what I did. Hey, Deb, hey, Deb, I, I tried that thing and it worked really, really well. Or, hey, Deb, I tried that thing and I, I just didn't seem to make it work. Please help me again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And the, that reporting back is critical it's actually pro well they're all critical steps. i was gonna say it's the most important step but it's not because they're all freaking important but the thing is is that just reinforces that bridge when you have a man when you have a coach there's a bridge between you and every time you report back you make it stronger and stronger and stronger and you make it easier and easier and easier for them to coach you if there's no feedback if there's no reporting the coach doesn't know if you're listening. And if the coach doesn't know, helping you. I've never heard that aspect, JJ. That is really good. Really good. I got a good coach. That all comes from Jerry Robert. Uh, no, I've never, never heard that before. It's, a, it's very good. Very good. Um, yes, and they do. They do stop coaching. That's, that's absolutely correct. There's actually people on this line. There's people listening to this that... I used to coach and I stopped because I didn't hear back mm, mm, mm. because, because I wasn't getting that feedback. I had no idea if they were listening. I had no idea if they're implementing. And if you're not executing it on my watch, well, that's a, that's a kiss of death for me, but, right. but it is for every coach because every coach got to where they are by doing. Mm. And if you're not doing what they suggest, they're going to stop coaching. Mm, mm. That it is very, very good. Very good. So, Deb, what is the difference between a coach and a mentor? In my mind, and you tell me if I'm right in this, because this is, this is what I formed in my mind. In, uh, a coach will tell you what to do. So a coach says, okay, um, someone, someone comes to you with, a, with an issue. Let's say I'm, let's just say I'm 20 pounds overweight. Let's just be wild there. And they come and they say, okay, well, you've got to do this, you've got to eat this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, and you've got to do this. Um, so they give you an actual structure and a plan. Okay. Um, a mentor is, in my mind, is someone who um, maybe has a less active role uh, in, in a way, but they, they enable you they, they kind of ask you the questions so that they, you bring it out of yourself. You bring the answers out of yourself. They can see things in you, but they're not saying, okay, you're this, 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 and this. But so sometimes that really helps. Um, uh, or you need to put this money here, or you need to put that money there, or you need to buy that house. They'll, they'll enable you to see those things for yourself um, by drawing it out of you. Uh, yeah. And they cost a lot more. <laughs> I mean, I, that's an interesting point. And I, I have a, I have a, probably the same, I have the same opinion. It's just that I, I just think that, and I don't know, this may not be the right, I don't know. This the way I feel is that a mentor is just a higher level coach. I think, oh. I think a mentor has another level of understanding of how to, how to get someone to where they need to go. A coach will tell you, like you said, a coach will say, a coach will tell you what to do and expect you to do it. Mm. A, men a mentor will let you get there yourself. Mm. And they'll let you fall down as well. Um, you know, they won't, they won't push you. They'll allow you, to, they'll allow you to fall, just like you've allowed me to fall, JG. <laughs> <laughs> but you're there to pick me up. Um, you're there, uh, you know... Uh, and you just sort of have a, have an understanding and a knowing about people, don't you, that 
you know when to you know when you're when you're coaching or mentoring and you and Jerry cross over in those paths and I've got you know there's there's a couple of people that draw on me for mentorship in the company and that it's also something that a mentor won't put themselves out there um, that they really have to be seeked out um, I was just having a look and uh, I was interesting to note that um, uh, Mark Mark Zuckerberg, his mentor was Steve Jobs. I did not know that. Oh, um, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, her mentor was Madonna, um, and uh, uh, Maya Angelo. Angelo, please forgive. I I'm, I'm not familiar. I know the person, but I'm not familiar on how to pronounce her name. And I think I've got it wrong. Was Oprah's mentor? So mm. you know, at, they're quite a different level, as you said. Um, a mentor to uh, to but I don't I don't believe that it has to be a, a different level as in oh uh, what am I trying to say here um, you and Jerry are very much mentors of mine Mike is a mentor of mine um, I don't have to go and from I can't say that uh, you know um, Seth, Seth Godin I reached out to him to be a mentor of mine physically. He didn't pick it up. Fair enough. That's fine. Um, you can't, a mentor is someone that you can't, like a coach, you can, a coach will, will in, 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 in outside of black card books, if you want a coach in something, you pay them some money. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the amazing thing that we've got here is we've got coaches and mentors here that are just free and willing to give their gifts. I mean, let, let, let's go let's go one step further than that deb let's go one step further which is keep in mind guys and i hope you realize this and pay very close attention to what i'm going to say there are thousands of people outside this organization which pay tens of thousands of dollars to have the mentorship we're offering you for free so pay attention here you know and think about iap clients they're paying 40 plus thousand dollars to get our mentorship and our coaching and and that comes as part of being part of the family, doesn't it? That is a really good point, actually. They're paying 20000 typically paying $20,000 a year for our coaching and our mentoring on being becoming a published author. It is not about marketing materials. It is not about, yes, we deliver right. those things, but it is not all about those things. And JG, you said something last week that just has not left me. Um, in, we're good at... We're good at um, we're good at, you're going to have to remind me again. We're I know good, it in my head. We're good at delivering things. Yes, that's right. We're good at delivering things and we've got to get good at delivering results. That's where we're headed. Um, and uh, yes, Adina, we are the lucky ones. Absolutely. Uh, um, so, uh, yes, take it. It's... <laughs> Don't take it for granted. My goodness, don't take it for granted. And, and that's actually the, the next thing I wanted to talk about. Mike has a really interesting question. Guys, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. We, we'd love to talk to your questions and answer them. Uh, and if you're enjoying this, then tell us that. And if you want some something more, something different direction, we'd be happy to help you with that as well. But Deb, I think one of the things I want to talk about is you know, there, there's somebody who just started MJ, just started at Black Card Books two days ago, you know, or, or Black Card Marketing Group, sorry, two days ago. And she, and she's nervous and, and she, you know, she's not sure if she can approach you and me or somebody else. And it's not just Deb and I that are the coaches and the mentors here, guys. There's, there's coaches within your departments. There's mentors within your departments. And, and my, my question is, and, and I'm always fascinated. I'm always fascinated by this is you're scared, you think it's crowded up here, and you think there's no room for you, and you think you need to do something special to get up here. But everybody that when you're up here and you were down there, and when I say up here and down there, I'm all I'm not talking about on the orchard, I'm just talking about life where we're heading here. After we've been through this, Deb, I mean, I just want to say, like. Take the bull by the horns, guys. We want you up here. If you have aspirations to be an executive, to be a manager, to have more, do more, be more, you can. You just got to grab the damn bull by the horns and drag the sucker up here. Because 
And I think being open to coaching is a is probably the biggest. It's the biggest part. If I got someone that's open to coaching them, I can literally coach them into whatever we want. Yeah. Whatever they whatever they want. Forget what we want. It's whatever they want. That's the only skill you need. And I think that's actually that's very interesting. That's the only damn skill you need is coachability. And when we hire speakers and PCs and 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 a lot of and when I'm working with an executive that I'm looking to hire, that's the only skill you need. If you're open to coaching, the rest I can teach you. I can teach you to be a good marketer. I can teach you to be a good salesperson. And not because I know it all. I'll get other experts to teach you if you open a coaching. The minute you close the door, all everything. The minute you're not coaching, everything stops. Everything stops. Yes. And does. I think that's yeah. the only skill we need, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Um, yeah. It's that. It is that open and yeah. And um, in that. <laughs> It is. I mean, we we can we can see stars and we can see people in the company that um, could have exactly what they're wanting, but because they're not open to coaching, they can't. Oh, <laughs> well, it, it, oh that is such a good point, and that really pisses me off. You know, when when we got when we got somebody that is right there and I know they can do more. I know they can be more. They just got to open up and they just got to be willing to be open to coaching. So why? So let's talk about that for a sec. I don't know how long this is going to go, but I love this conversation. So why is it that people aren't open to coaching? Deb? Why? Like, listen, why would someone, Mrs. Mary Smith, I don't think we have that name on our payroll. So Mrs. Mary Smith works for Black Card Books. She's got everything it takes, man. She just needs to be open to coaching and we'll rocket her to the top. We need her skill. We need her. We need it all. But she's not open to coaching. She's, she can have more. She can do more. She can be more. She's got everything it takes. She's not open to coaching. Why is she not open to coaching? Um, okay. I know that I know it's quite a rhetorical question, but I think some of the things that I've seen is that they're not willing to let go of the way maybe it's education maybe it's 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 whatever way that they've been taught and they believe that this is how you do it um uh and it can be hard you know strong strong people it can be very difficult to come into a into a company and um you know you you're, you're coming in uh um i don't remember who it was but someone said to me you know um i'm you know, I'm, be, I'm not being paid to do as I'm told. I'm being paid to, for something along those lines, I'm being paid to, 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 you know, bring what I know. And that's true. That is true. Um, however, um, you've got to get on the, you've got to get on the, you've got to get on the boat. You've got to get on the, the vision and, and, and understand you actually don't know everything. And also understand that, that, you're not writing the checks. <laughs> You're taking the check. So, you know, even if, even, even if, and I've realised that this is not true, even if you do actually know more than the people that are running the company and leading the company, even if you do actually know more than them, um, it's not your place. You're not writing the checks. So, you know, you may have to just set aside what you know best and what you know better than everyone else that has ever done this, which is why you're in the job and not leading the $10 million company, right? Because you know better. Um, so you've got to let go of those things that you think you know better of more. Um, you know, uh, yeah, pride. Trevon, I, I was going to say pride, but I think it's just we won't let go of it. So... Yeah. Um, and it's very, it's so liberate. People think that if they let go of, of those things that they know that they know that they've fought to get and they've, you know, they've dragged themselves up to this place and now they're working here and everybody needs to know what they know. Um, you know, it, once you let go of that, it's so freeing. <laughs> yeah. um, it is so freeing to understand that you don't know what you don't know and you don't know stuff you just 
You just don't, but other people do. And that's where I circle back. And when you take on what Trevon knows and what Bonnie knows and what Mike knows and what JG knows and what Jerry knows, you take all of those things on. My goodness, how much are you then? Um, yeah. And that's just being open. That's being open to coaching. Um, I saw Sandra had a comment there. What's the difference between, and I thought it was a real good, what's the cool. difference between coaching and commanding, JG? Well, there's a big difference because coaching is, coaching has nothing, they're, they're diametric, they're actually the exact opposites in, in my, in my uh, opinion. Commanding is, is not, um, uh, commanding is not listening. Coaching is listening. Mm -hmm. Commanding is saying. Coaching isn't about, when I'm coaching someone, if I'm, if, if I'm coaching, if the conversation is 10 minutes, they're talking nine, I'm talking one. Or they're talking nine and a half, I'm talking 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, and again, that's probably, you know, a, a little bit more mentorship than, than coaching, so to speak. But it doesn't, it, to me, they're both the same. They're just a different level. But co commanding is, and, and there, I really don't see a, a place for commanding whatsoever. Uh, and I think if someone is commanding as a form of coaching, uh, they're, they're probably trying too hard and they're attached to the label coach, which is kind of crazy. Um, but that's what I would say. Deb, what do you think about that? I'm thinking, I'm trying to put myself in, um, in, a, you know, in a remote office environment. And I think maybe I'm guilty of this. Maybe I come across as commanding, um, <laughs> maybe I do maybe I do and, and I'm I'm very open to being coached out of that and it, that's another thing too is like seeing like what all into that um, and it I think to me commanding is based on a task it's task oriented isn't it like just do it just get that done maybe maybe there's some resistance there maybe maybe the person's feeling you know they're just not listening to me or, you know, this is, you know, whatever the scenario. So just, just, do, just do this. I just need you to just do this. That is a command, a coach, and, and that's for the benefit of a task or something that has to get done. Yeah. If a client needs calling, it's just like whatever, just, just do this. Just, just call them. That's a command, right? Um, whereas coaching would have come before that and the person would have already called them so you wouldn't have to say just do this so a coach a coach has the betterment the betterment of the person in in mind so or the the, the people in mind so if we're talking about losing weight a coach is going to say eat this eat that eat this eat that but their motivation is results for you so sure. their motivation isn't to give a, be a taskmaster. Their motivation yeah. is to make you a better person on that call. Yeah. Charity, makes a, Charity makes a great point there. She says commanding is task-oriented, coaching is result-oriented, which is very, 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 very well said, Charity. Uh, and I also, I also think that, that uh, coaching will, will include how to do it. So if you need calls made, I need these calls made. That's a command. I don't know if that's the command is the right word. It's a task. Do the task. If, but, but how to make the calls, how to improve the calls, how to get a better result from those calls. You're going to have to make these 100 calls. Let's get the best possible outcome here. That's coaching. That's coaching. If you have, if you have something in your paradigms stopping you from being effective, at those calls, that's coaching mentorship. If they can get you to realize that on yourself and you uncover that yourself and get yourself out of your own way, that's true mentorship. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <clears throat> now, Mike had a question above, and then guys, we'll take a few more questions, and then if if uh, yeah, if you got more questions, be happy to keep this going. Now, Mike had a good question, Deb, and I think we addressed a little bit of this, but oh no, sorry, Jed, let's take Jed's question first. He says, "How should you word word? How should you word it so the person you are coaching, i.e., talking about his or her areas of improvement, does not feel bad?" 
he or she feels bad when being coached. Oh, I, I love it. I love it. Jen. Go ahead, Deb. Uh, no, you go first on this one because I'm going to be okay. a badass and you're going so, to be kind. So, so, <laughs> so, two, so two things. So first of all, uh, they should not feel bad, Jen, because they should have asked permission. They should have, they should have given you permission to coach them. And that should eliminate both objections there. Both problems are eliminated by giving permission. You don't feel bad coaching them because they've asked for it. So, so I would, and this is how you start, by the way. Do I have your permission, Deb, to be honest with you and give you honest feedback in this coaching session? Yes, you do. Great. You've given me permission. You're not allowed to feel bad now. You're not allowed to make me feel bad. You gave me freaking permission. So I think by doing just that single thing right there, Jeb, you eliminate both those objections. Yep. 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 That's, that's great. And you know, so someone gets their feelings hurt, you know, big deal. <laughs> I love it. And Anna says, what's your permission score in, in the, in the Packers and the boot camps, guys, we say this to the client, you know, what's your coachability score and what's your permission score. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're, we also have a thing called a must score, but, uh, you know, are you open to coaching? That's, that's why that's the first question. If, if, if we're going, if we're in a situation, Jen, where I was coaching you and you needed help, I would start by saying, are you open to coaching? If you said no, then I would stop right there. If you said yes, I would feel comfortable proceeding to the coaching session and you would get what you need to get to where you want to go. Yeah. Good question. Great question. Love it. And then Mike said, I've heard you both say that you can do that you that that you can and do have mentors who don't know that they're your mentor. You just watch them. Can you talk on that? Talk to that. Yeah, so I I uh Adina is sending me a text of oh that's such a freaking cute picture. I gotta put it in the chat here for everybody. Let me put this in. Can I do this? Can I do this? Come on. How do I send that file to everybody? You guys have got to see this. This is the cutest freaking thing. Oh, Adina, you melt my heart, girl. Check this out. Hold on, I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, this is so good. Look at this. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> I mean, whether that's a stage shot or not, I don't care. I'm putting that up in my office. I got my little fan. I love it. Awesome. That's great. Um, what was the question now? I'm, uh, I've completely melted. I have no idea what the hell we're talking about. Um, mentors. Can oh, yeah. Uh, ha, 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 yeah. Mentors. Yeah. I, 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 have, I have lots of them, in fact. Um, one of them is, is Tony Robbins. I mean, I've, never, I've met Tony. I've you know, walk by him, you know, been there with him, but he doesn't know he's coaching me. He doesn't know he's my mentor, but I watch everything he does. I, I follow him everywhere. I read all of his books. I follow all, most of his programs and every day, literally every day I am watching some Tony Robbins video podcast or something. And he's in my space. He's in my brain. And, uh, when I have a problem, he's one of the voices that speak to me. That kind of sounds weird, but you get it. Yeah. Um, you know, and that that's one example. And I have many of those. Um, you, you know, and that, become, yeah, that, and that this is this is good actually because you are very good at that, Gary B. Um, yeah. yeah, he would be he would be a marketing mentor for me for sure. I mean, shit, I I'm right now I'm consuming him way more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And and that's the point is that you consume them. Uh, it's there. You you you're you're consuming them you're 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 getting from them daily uh uh just more and more and more and and just filling your mind and filling those paths so when something comes up then then something that either tony said or gary said or depending on who it is that that's what that's what pops out of your head um so yeah it's being saturated or consumed a little bit like mean springsteen yeah, well, abs absolutely, and it's and it's not like I don't know if people truly understand, and and I'm I'm different because I don't have some of the, you know, I don't have the things, some of the things you guys have. I don't have kids. 
I, I got a lot of people around me, but I don't have kids. So that doesn't take up my time. That's very, you know, that frees up a lot of my time. Um, now there's other businesses that take up the difference, but my point is, is that I, I don't do like, and this is just my personal preference guys, but like, I don't do anything other than this. What I mean by that is like, I dro I drove to Toronto today and back. I spent three hours on the road. All I did was, was consume podcasts. I consumed the Tony Robbins podcast. I consumed a Gary V podcast. I had phone calls with Jerry. I had phone calls with Mike Turton. It's like, you know, there's no. There's no, I don't sit on the couch and watch American Idol. If I'm going to sit on the couch, I'm going to consume something that's going to empower me. And that's just the way I've been wired now. And it wasn't always like that. I used to be just, you know, just like everybody else. I'd watch the news and I'd read the stupid newspaper. And, and these are things that I've noticed over the years did not help me get to where I want to go. So now I've cut all that stuff out and, and I still have those, like, that's what I call disconnecting. You know, I... I'm not going to, when I'm not working, like right before I go to bed, I'm going to watch a video from Gary Vee or I'm going to watch a, uh, and Scott makes actually an interesting yeah. remark about MYV podcast, but I listen to MYV podcast. I watch Jerryology. Uh, I watch hustle cam. I do the damn things I still want. And that's my way of disconnecting. Uh, in, and, but I'm consuming that stuff and I'm constantly filling my mind and those become the mentors that I most resonate with, those become the people that don't know they're mentoring me, coaching me, but but they are because, like you said, Deb, when when something happens, that's that's I got brain cells in there that are a little section for Tony Robbins, a little section for Gary Vee, a little section for Richard Branson. I'm a big fan of Richard Branson. I consume a lot of his stuff. Huge fan of Steve Jobs, uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. These are these are the people. These are that's pretty much my list right there. Um, and that's yeah. yes, it, it's uh, and we're in the same place at the, now because we, you know, our kids are grown. Of course, we do have grandkids, but they're, you know, they're not here every day. I'm not distracted by, you know, I'm not distracted by those things anymore. And, and Mike's always been very, very, very focused. Um, you know, whatever he was doing, he was completely absorbed in it. And uh, uh, and uh, Scott, I know that he drove back from Melbourne yesterday and it was meetings with JG. It was, he listened to all caught up on the podcasts, um, your podcasts. And, you know, it's, it is just that it's absorbing and, and, you know, putting yourself in, it's just soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Teresa. yeah Teresa. Awesome. Yeah. I love, it. I love Scott. Absolutely. I'm just asking these guys if this if this is any good if they uh, if they're liking this so we're getting some good feedback though so I think we're I think we're hitting nerve here but often on a Friday for my disconnect I will often on a Friday I'll do YouTube and I'll bring up some Springsteen music that's how I disconnect I disconnect by music um, yeah. and I should do it more uh, and I am getting there JG but walking as well you know you you I. For me, I have to disconnect um, because, you know, we, as we can, you know, we are absorbed in it. But if I sit at my desk for longer than eight or 12 hours in a row, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to get oh, away. Wow. I just get, whoa, my head just gets so full. And you've seen me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually that, but that's, that's a really good point though about disconnecting. And you're going to see my, my video tomorrow is going to be about sleep. Uh, in my in my Wednesday, but you know, there's one of the key things I've heard, and this was this, and and you know, I I talk about hustle more than most, as you guys know, and uh, but it's not what we, it's not it's not that. And uh, Jerry's son actually asked me this. He said, "So how much do you work? Like you're just always seem to be working." That's a that's a bit of a fallacy. And since I got everybody on the phone, let me clear it up. I don't always work. I don't work 24 seven. And there's a lot of people in this company that put in more desk hours than me. Lots of you, too many of you, frankly. The thing is, is I'm very effective when I am here. It's not about, it's not about how much I work. It's about how well I work. And, and that's the difference. I've been teaching you that you're a hell of a lot. You've been, you've come a long way, girl. Um, you remember Deb that thing this meeting? I do. Yeah, I do. But I'm with Bonnie, and I do watch you for that. And I haven't found the key yet, even though I've lived with you for probably six months now. 
I haven't found the key, but one when I do, I will tell you. Um, <laughs> tell me and tell others. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I haven't found it yet, but I will. I will find it. And well, if you I think I think it's a I frankly think and and this is going to you you may jump on me for this and I'm okay to be jumped on but I think it's a male female thing frankly cuz mm -hmm. Carrie Carrie has the same problem you and Bonnie have and I, I like I turn it off like this when I say it's over when I say it's done it's done and and oh, like like after this it's I've been at this now since 6 a.m. I'm I'm actually really fired up because this is a lot of fun, but I'm not tired at all. But after this, I've already decided I'm not doing anything else. I'm just going to go spend time with Carrie. We're going to do, you know, we're just going to hang out, but that's it. And, and, you know, I find women hang on and they, and it just trickles them and they can't turn it off. I just, I just turn it off. I don't know where the hell I picked that up, girl. If I can bottle it for you, I would, but. Yes, I think what we need to learn, Bonnie, is that we need to learn when he, to work when he does and not when he, when he switches off. That's probably the key. Say that again. <laughs> we need a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but we need to learn to work when you do and switch off because we, we end up working all around. Sure. As a, you know, and JG's our CEO, and that's, yes. you know, he is going to generate the work. Um, but... Jerry generates work for him. Oh, so I know that there's a key there. I know yeah, there. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and I have matched your, your 100. That's a great point. I've never identified that really. But, you know, my personality is very, uh, well, not only my role, but my, my personality when I get into it. And, and sometimes it's, it's 10 a.m. my time. It's 1 a.m. your time. And I'm banging away. And I'm just in a groove that happens to include you. And you're stuck there. And I have definitely noticed over the years that I've learned to match Jerry's, um, like I know when he's taking downtime, I match that downtime because I know when he comes back, I'm going to have to be back. So, yes, I do. I think there's a key there. Which, which means, Deb, you just, you and Mike need to move to Canada. <laughs> We've talked about this. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it is all different schedules. Um, yeah, it, it's also a matter. It's also a matter of, and I wasn't always this good at it, Deb. But it's also a matter of permission. Yes, you know, you're gonna give yourself permission. I've given you guys permission. Uh, you just haven't given yourself. You haven't taken it. I've given you permission. I don't expect you, both of you, and you guys know that, and everybody knows that. But but you know, um, you gotta give yourself permission. I think at the same time, and I know, and I know that because I lived through it with Jerry. Uh, where I was feeling like that, and I just had to give myself permission. It's okay. It's it's. I'm done. It's over. Mm. I'm going to bed now. Mm. Relaxing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that was a little. That was great because that was a little sneak peek into into how we actually work together. So that was a gem for everybody. I think it was a gem. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And and uh, you know, let let me do the. Uh, and, and I think that, that that leads in. I'll just complete that thought, Deb, with the sleep thing. Because I think that, you know, you got – because I'm going to do this on video tomorrow. But since I got everybody live, I might as well do it now. And then I'll do something else tomorrow. But but I think this – let's talk about the sleep thing real quick, Deb. Because I know that, you know, sleep, I think, is, is way – you have to know yourself for how much sleep you need. And, and whatever you need, you should get. And I don't judge anybody. If you need 10 hours, then get your 10 hours. That just means you're going to have less hours to do other stuff, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But but if you need – like, I operate best at six – between six and seven. Mm -hmm. And and for for a short period of time, I'm really good at five. Like, I love five. Now, I can't do five, you know, forever – uh, but, but like if I have a power week where I'm getting five hours, I'm, I'm, it really jacks me up and I like that, but then I got to get a good seven to recharge and then I'm good on the six, seven scale. That's me. And I get that every night. I, I'm, I'm not sleeping less than that guys. If you think that as your CEO, I'm sleeping two hours a night and working 22 hours a day, you're freaking nuts. Mm, 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 mm. And I think that now I like the six and seven, like Carrie, uh, she's going to laugh at me for telling you guys this, but she needs more. She, she's like an eight. She needs seven to eight at least. She says, hell yeah. She probably more than mine. And, 
and that's what that's that's what she likes. So Deb, Deb, what's your what's your deal? Look, it, it used to be a lot more. Um, at the moment, actually, this year I'm I'm around five hours, and it isn't enough. Uh, if I could get, but I, I, I this year's been a little bit crazy for me, and uh, you know, there's there's been different things that have come in. I am best at six to seven. That's where that's where I function best at. But I can do five. I've learnt to do. I've learned to do five, but mm -hmm. it's been selfish because I haven't learned to do five just for so that I can work 19 hours a day. It's so that I can, you know, work the eight to 12 hours. I want to get that back down because I think that I can. I think that I'll be more effective if I'm not, if I'm not, um, if I'm not doing what what other people can do. Uh, We've got to function in our gifts and our talents to be the most effective. That aside, um, I it's important to me to uh, to to you know experience and sit and listen and pay attention to what my kids are doing and pay you know I, I get I get great um, I get inspiration outside of myself and outside of the office environment and that's important to me. I need that. Um, so I, I, my hours, my sleep time gets cut because I, I don't want to give up those things. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, um, I, I think you said something interesting there, uh, Deb, which is, which is you, you've, uh, you know, it was six, seven, now it's five, but you're, you're, I think self-awareness is so key. And, and there are moments this summer that were stressful and I needed a bit more and I gave myself permission to take it. And then there's other times like last week and this week that it is full on and it's like five, six a night and, and I love it and it's great. And I'm in my element, but if I'm tired next week, then it's going to be eight or it's going to be seven or whatever. And that's okay. And I think that we are self enough. We've learned to be self enough, self enough, self aware enough to understand ourselves, which is key. But but you guys listening to this need to hear us doing this for ourselves so that you know it's okay to do it for you too. That's right. Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, and I will, I will, the weekends, um, I will sleep a little bit. I'll, I will try and catch up on that five hours through the week and sleep a little bit more on weekends, both Mike and I. Uh, you know, and he, you know, he functions, Mike functions on. Mike's a freaking machine. Mike's a machine. And I'm the, see, I'm the opposite on the weekends. I get up earlier on the weekends because the phone's not going off and I don't have everybody wanting to get a little piece of me. So, you know, from, from 6 a.m. until 9, 10 a.m. in the weekends is my favorite time because there's nobody there. And I can really just sit and think and, and be with myself, mm. which, which, you know, uh, which is good. It gives me time. Mm, yeah, we, uh, yeah. I don't. I'll often, you know, we'll, I'll just, I will talk and we'll discuss things. Usually, work oriented, but um, we'll discuss things. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stay horizontal for as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Well, guys, I hope, uh, I hope this has been helpful. I see a lot of great. Uh, hold on, how do you coach someone that juggles multiple priorities and commitments and time management? Ooh, oh, we got a, we got a late bloomer here. Teresa's coming in with a, with a heavy-handed question right at the end. Um, Deb, how do you coach someone that juggles multiple priorities and commitments and time management? Yeah, exactly the way that JG coaches me. Um, and all of us, it's like hands off, you know, you've got permission to sleep and do whatever you need to do. If you choose not to do that, you know, you know what I think. We've all heard JG today. This would be probably the, I don't know, 15th, 20th time he said that to me over the past five years. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it is up to us to decide what we're going to do. Um, also, juggling multiple priorities and commitments and time management, you've got to learn to delegate. You have got, when I first came, there is no way, and you've all heard this, some of you haven't because you knew, there is no way I could have an assistant. I would never have enough for assistant to do. There's no way. When Miss Bonnie came in, there's no, no but nobody could do what I do. That's, <laughs> that's true to a degree. Um, uh, 
nobody can sell like Bonnie can sell. That's absolutely true. That's why that's that's her gift to us. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that she was doing that she did not have to do. And as JG said, now I've got what a hundred people that 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 you know come alongside and do what I used to do. <laughs> so you've got to learn to delegate, Teresa. You have got to and build your team. Build your team. You've got to because you can't do everything. You can't scale on your own. You can't do anything of value on your own. Nothing. You've got to learn to to build a team around you. I think the other thing I would just add to that, I think those are beautiful points. I think the other things I, I know where Teresa's coming from. She's got multiple business interests. She's got multiple stuff. And I get that because I got that. And, and a lot of you on the call may not have that, but you have multiple priorities like families and kids and real, like real shit. And, and you need to me, the key is being present when I'm, when I'm in it, I'm in it for that. And I don't focus on if, if I'm, if I'm with my, um, with, if I'm with Deb and I'm focused on Blackheart and I'm being CEO and she's being COO, we're, we're doing that. And I'm present and I'm not focused on Carrie and I'm not focused on the spa and I'm not focused on anything else. I'm just focused on that. That's it. I'm present. I'm in the moment and we're doing this. The minute I'm single tasking that baby like crazy. But, I, but I'm not only single tasking Raza because it's a great point, but I'm also present. I'm, 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 I'm emotionally spiritually and physically present. My mind is not elsewhere. Now, when I'm done that task and we're done this conversation, I shut it down. And if I got to juggle and if I got to go to the next thing, I become present in that. And that is a skill. Raza talks about it. That's a skill. That is a skill. I have learned it. It took me a lot of time, but it's just by just, just repetition, just practice just repetition. And like, you know, and I think that that's, that's really, that's the key, that's the key there, Teresa, for you, because you got so many different things, be present with it and, and, and give it everything you got and then turn the tap and move on. Mm. Yeah. What were you going to say? You grabbed the book there. Very good. Yes, I did grab the one thing. It's a good book. I didn't read all of it, but it is a great book. And that's my, my, that's my dad that recommended that book. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a nice, nice layout too. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it is one thing. And this one's all marked up absolutely everywhere, just marked up. And it's good, you know, because we can get, we can get too down on ourselves and that's counterproductive if you, you know, but the practice, practice being present, that is a book. Um, and it is, oh. it's, yeah, the pra practice of being present, something like that. And it is, a, it is, it is life changing. That's for sure. Awesome. Guys, any final questions before we wrap this puppy up? I think Deb, this has been amazing. And we, we got to send this, we got to get this off to Andrea and the content team because there's freaking gold in them down hills. True. There's gold in them down hills. There's content there for a year. So we got to get that off. Uh, guys, let us know. Uh, yes, we're going to have the recording. Yes, we're going to send it out. I don't know who's going to take care of that. Let's, uh, Keith. He's going to take care of that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, folks, uh, what I'd like you to do is, and I don't know where, tell Louis, let's do that. Tell Louis on Skype or email or however else you want to message her. Tell Louis what other types of, of um, what kind of fire, what other fireside chats do you want? Mm. You know, give, give, us, give us an indication of what you want. This coaching one actually came about from someone who recommended, I'd like to learn how to be better coached. I'd like to, like to learn to be a better coach. And that's how this came about. So please pass on your suggestions to Louis and tell us. Um, and there, there's another one that's been so amazing. And, and, and one of the shining stars of being open to coaching and starting as my assistant. And now, you know, being at the head of this company with us, uh, and all because she was open to coaching. I mean, she she would she's she's great, but she was open to coaching and she learned along the way. And we coached her and we took under our wing, and and that's the biggest message I want to leave everybody else with, which is, which is we want you under our wing. We want to take you along for the ride. Don't think you're an imposition. Don't think you're. Don't think you're. Uh, you just got to be open to it. I mean, the the space is there. Look, look at under these wings. Look, there's room. There's space. So. 
and that is that is, and I should have uh, I it was in my mind to to uh, speak to this to at the beginning of the of the uh, session together but just hearts out to Louis and uh, Charmaine or Storm today uh, their grandma's being buried today so the week-long wake is uh, it's come to a, a, a closure with the burial today um, both both ladies are doing great um, you know Louis hasn't missed a beat um, uh, and and most of that is because she's needed to be distracted. She's been very happy to you know to be here. So don't you know don't think that she's not here. She is very much here. Uh, the funeral is today, and um, yeah, I hope it's a real special. It will be a very special time for them. Um, so yeah, and the other thing is, everybody. Well, I've got everybody read that newsletter, comment on that newsletter, um, yeah. participate in that newsletter. It's a part of your job. Okay, some people are viewing it as like Facebook, you know, it's not just Facebook, it is your newsletter. And there are things that are happening there and being said there that you all need to know. So at right. some stage during the week, even if it's not every day, at some stage, Saturday and Sunday is my catch up day. Um, so Monday as well, but get in there and make sure that you listen and grasp everything. It's very easy, all the videos are there, you can chunk through them in one session. Uh, it's a part of your job. Put it on your hours, um, but make sure you go through that newsletter. It's all part of alignment, baby. It's all part of alignment. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Deb, you're the best. I love you, and I will see you very soon. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You make Thanks, guys. Stuff. Thanks so much for coming. Have a great day, guys.